Welcome to the next video for uh, Math 120 Statistics and uh, today we're going to talk about um, comparing two different populations. So far we've been looking at proportions, means, standard deviations and we've been comparing our sample to some comparison value, some value from the null hypothesis, the status quo. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, what if I don't know anything about these two populations but I want to compare them, I want to see if they're different. Um, and so we're going to compare two population proportions, two population means, and two population standard deviations. We're going to start in 11.1 .1 with proportions. So we're going to learn how to do some hypothesis tests and confidence intervals. We're going to leave the sample size necessary to the online lesson and to the homework. Um, pretty similar calculation there to what we've done before. So um, let's get started here. So here's the idea. So we're comparing two different populations. Um, and let's say we want to look at the proportion in these populations that is red. So we look in the first proportion, for first population, we have 16 of them are red. Uh, second population, same population size, but a different proportion are red. So clearly these two sample proportions are different, but the question is, are they different enough for us to say that the populations they come from have a different proportion who are red? So that's the issue is we, we, when we do a sample proportion, even if there's a difference, is that difference big enough? If, is that difference big enough for us to say that the populations are actually different? So that's what we need to do. We need to develop some machinery about this difference in sample proportions. So we're going to look at the distribution of that uh, difference of sample proportions. So here's the criteria. Uh, if we have simp uh, simple random samples taken from two different populations, then p hat mi 1 minus p hat 2 will be approximately normally distributed with this mean and standard deviation. Don't stress yourself out about those formulas. Uh, we're going to be using StatCrunch to do these calculations. But uh, they will be normally distributed provided this will look familiar. n times p times 1 minus p is at least 10, but that has to be true for both populations. And each, popula each sample has to be less than 5% uh, of their respective populations. So then we can have a hypothesis test, and you know the drill. We have a null hypothesis. Uh, typically here, the null hypothesis is that the proportions are the same, uh, so that the difference is zero or that the proportions are the same. And then we've got all the same steps here. So the only thing different is going to be the test statistic. Um, so it's a little crazy here. The test statistic is this crazy Z um, where we have the value that we're looking at, uh, p1 hat minus p2 hat minus what we think it is from the null hypothesis over this standard deviation. Now, typically, we assume that these are equal. So then what we would do is we would pool the p1 hat and p2 hat uh, into this p hat, where it's kind of a, a bad way to add fractions. We actually add the numerators, get the total number of successes, and divide by the total number of observations. And then we get a test statistic, so if we assume P1 equals P2, then this value in here in the numerator is zero, and if the proportions are equal, we can pool that standard deviation. This is a little, I don't know, I don't feel good about this kind of waving our hands at that and saying that, you know, we're, we can't really get into the details of that. Uh, it's kind of beyond us for this class, but this is the, the test, test statistic that um, uh, StatCrunch will be giving us. All right. So moving on, let's look at an example. So we're suppose um, we have a researcher and we think that college faculty vote at a higher rate than college students. And we collect data from 200 uh, of each, random sample of um, 200 faculty, 200 students. We have 167 faculty, 138 students. Is there enough evidence to support the researcher's claim? So let's go through the steps here. First, state the null and alternative hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis is that they are equal. And then we were told here that the researcher thought that faculty voted at a higher rate. So then our alternative would be that the pro proportion of faculty who vote is higher than the proportion of students. Or if you subtract them, you get a positive value there if you take the proportion of faculty minus the proportion of students. Uh, level of significance, we're told to use 0.05 like usual, and then we're going to do test statistic and p-value. So let me find um, stat crunch here, sorry about that. 
So let's see here, stat, proportion stats. Now we're doing two sample and we're doing with summary. And we have number of successes. We had 167 out of 200 for faculty, 138 out of 200 for students. The null hypothesis is that the proportion was equal. The alternative is that it is greater than. So we'll compute. And we have a pretty big Z stat, pretty small P value. So there's the window that we did. And we have a Z statistic that's fairly large P value that is small. So when we go to the next step, reject the null hypothesis that the p-value is less than the level of significance. So we would reject. We observed something really, really unusual. It was at 3 out of 10,000 there. 3 out of 10,000 times you could get a difference this large just randomly. So that difference is probably not random. So our conclusion, there is enough evidence to support that claim that faculty vote at a higher rate. So that's a test for the difference in a proportion. Uh, we can also do a confidence interval. So now that we're doing inference, we can have hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. So um, I've got some different data here. Um, one thing I've been interested in, and we'll see this in later areas too, is the relationship between high school GPA and success uh, at the college level. And my research has shown that students who are in a 3.5 or higher in their high school GPA were more likely to succeed. So the one question we might have is, well, one, one criticism I often receive is that, well, GPA is different at different schools. Some schools, you know, there's grade inflation, blah, blah, blah. So we could test that. Is the proportion of students who did well in high school that succeed here different for different schools? So I have two different um, districts here. I have District A, uh, one school, um, or one, not one school, but one, one district, 93% of students who did well in high school there ended up being successful in their first course here at ECC. Different school, different district, um, only 74% were successful. So clearly those are different, but does that, uh, is, is there a statistical difference there? Could it just be random that if I did a different three-year range, would I get different results that this just could happen randomly? So we're going to do a confidence interval. Uh, for the difference in the proportions. So here's a summary of what we have. And so if we look at um, the sample proportion for District A, 93%, so about 113 successes. And then um, District B, we'd have about 90 successes. So let's go to Stat Crunch again. And I'm actually going to, we'll do this again, I guess. Stat proportion stats to sample with summary. We had 113 successes out of 121, and then 90 successes out of 112. And now we're doing a confidence interval for the difference in proportions, so compute. So here is our difference in proportions. So if we go back over, there was the window that we did, and then there was our confidence interval. So we can be 95% confident that the difference is between about 4% and 22%. So in this case here, that difference, we're 95% confident that that difference is between 4 and 22%. So we're pretty sure that the difference is positive. We are pretty sure that um, District A, A students, 3.5 or higher high school GPA students from District A, do perform better at ECC than those same A students from District B. All right, so that is it from 11.1, .1, the difference of population proportions. Uh, in the next section, we'll talk about the difference in population means. Okay. This